and they did send out another optic. I'm just super loyal, so sometimes, even if it's not an optic that I'm currently running on my channel, I will help them with an overview, and today I'm doing another overview for them because I like the companies that helped me start out. I felt very uh, privileged for the opportunity, and I continue because I'm just a loyal guy like that, I guess. Uh, this is their combo. It's kind of an interesting optic. This one's a 2 to 10, has lots of extras on there. What I'm going to be testing today is primarily the main functions of the scope, the reticle, the focus, uh, the front focus on the objective, rather, maybe a little bit of the turrets, but I'm going to look at what it looks like mounted up on my BCA 201 in the Kid Innovations chassis that you're looking at right here. Thank you to Kid and BCA for sending that out to the channel. All right, briefly, I'll go over some of the features and add-ons that they throw in with this package. You have a piggyback red dot, which has red and green illumination with increasing illumination brightness as you rotate it clockwise. On the left, you have a flashlight that does come with uh, batteries as well. You could get some um, pretty good use out of that, even in cold weather. I've seen these last quite a while, so I think they're decent batteries. The scope itself has Picatinny on the side, on the top, and on the other side, which I'm going to show you in a second. And you have your reticle illumination on top as well. It's going to run off of a standard 2032 battery for this, as well as the red dot. And those are uh, pretty much long-lasting batteries at this point. I found them to be pretty effective. You have multiple reticle selections. You have underneath right here a little uh, tab you can grab. And that's going to go from kind of like a crosshairs with a dot in the middle to more traditional crosshairs that are not quite as bold. They uh, maybe obstruct target just a little bit more, but they're better for close range. Then you have a circle with a dot. It's kind of like a donut with a, a dot in the middle. And then just a standard dot. I tend to use either the circle with a dot or just the plain dot. And then I stick to the reticle for further shooting if I need to. So if you were going to try to use this for varminting or close range shooting, you could kind of go back and forth between the two. And I like running on a lot of my optics, as you've seen on my channel. I like running piggybacks. And this one is bright enough as I run through it. Let's see. It's bright enough for me in the way that I would use it. As I get to max brightness on green and max brightness on red, even on this bright day on the snow, I can contrast and see it there. You folks in the desert usually need something even more intense than that. But for me, it works. And I think going with the bolder reticle, if you need it to contrast better, it's going to work better on some of those thicker reticles. But green and red both seem to contrast pretty well for me today. The reticle itself, I'll flip open these caps. Now with the, the caps, you're probably not going to wear the front one very often because you are going to use this for your focus. And the focus numbers, they're more just reference points. Don't expect them to line up exactly. They're just on there to help you generally guide you in the right direction. It does go up to infinity, and I found that they're close enough. They're ballpark for the shooting I'm doing. I wouldn't take a scope like this really, really far, but I did take it to 300 yards just a little bit ago, and it seemed like it lined up about where I expected 300 to be. So for the reticle illumination, I would say... It's not going to be really, really bright, but dusk and early morning, which is totally sufficient. That's when practical illumination matters the most. You're going to get the contrast you need. It's very tactile. It's more of an increasing uh, brightness on the illumination. It doesn't have off in between, but it is in a place where you can easily get to it, and it won't interfere with the other things that you have going on here, such as your flashlight, your piggyback red dot, and then I'm going to show you on the other side there is a laser. When it comes to the laser, there are adjustments to zero it to your scope for a certain distance. Remember, when you're zeroing this, you're using these small uh, allens on the side and on the bottom, and the laser projects forward, and then your battery compartment is here. You're gonna put them in the rear. You do have inside the package some uh, QD attachments if you wanna do pressure pads. And pressure pads can be great. I don't wanna accidentally discharge it, so I didn't attach it on my unit here today, but you can easily do that if you wanna switch those out and have a pressure pad activation instead. Some people seem to really like that. Your numbered units here are going to be in minutes of angle, and I found them to track pretty reliably considering the price point of an optic like this. They basically help me get it zeroed up really well without too much frustration or difference, and the reticle is going to be more of an 
you know, mill radian based reticle, not MOA, but the mills seem to line up with my data shooting this out to 300 yards with kind of extreme holdover as well. And it's a nice bold reticle. I think the turrets and the clicks are audible. They are tactile. And like I said, they generally seem to be close enough uh, ballpark range. If you like to reset them, there is a way to do that. But I typically wouldn't worry about resetting something like this. It's just not important for me. I would pretty much just use them for convenience since they're exposed uh, in getting things zeroed quickly. And then I don't have to worry about putting on a turret cap. I'm not going to be dialing with these to hit different markers. I'm just going to use holdover in the reticle because it's mill based and that's what I prefer. Something unique about a scope like this is that you don't want it to interfere with the other things on top. So what they've done to make that work is first of all, it has a very glassy smooth magnification ring. I would say this is really, really well done actually. It's very smooth, it's tight. I'm very happy with the tolerances of this, especially at the price point. I've seen much, much <laughs> lesser tolerances or not as good of quality on scopes in this price point, but this one is quite smooth. The magnification of 2.5 to 10 power is easily sufficient for everything you would do with a scope like this in this price point. It's plenty enough. 2.5 is great on the low power, and if I was to try to push this down any lower, I think you'd just get weird uh, image and distortions. You are going to have some chromatic aberration with scopes like this. That's just kind of part of the territory. But you have a knob on the bottom, which is what I wanted to show you. This goes underneath, so if you need to increase magnification up to 10 power, that's when those mills are going to make sense. And this is what it's calibrated for, for the reticle. So you zero on 10 power. If you're going to use the mill radians and you want it to make sense and you want your data to be consistent, you need to zero on max power and then leave it on max power when you're hunting. Your field of view is still going to be sufficient for the things you need to do. And if you're buying something at this price point, I don't think you're going to be complaining about something like that anyways. Now I did back off magnification quite a bit to look at field of view and see what I could do if things were much closer. And honestly, it's really usable at 2.5 power. It feels more like three or four power, but it's quite usable. And then up at 10 power, it looked like a pretty traditional 10X to me for actual values. Um, I'm, not, I'm not too familiar with having magnification rings that go underneath like this, but I'm getting used to it. And I think the fact that they added this little knob just makes it all that much easier. To be honest with you, most of the time from target shooting, I'd just be leaving it on 10 power. And if I was varminting or doing something very, very close, I'd probably have it on 5 power and it would be underneath. It's not going to interfere. The height of the base, because this is an integral base underneath, should be sufficient for most of your guns where you're not going to have anything running in um, underneath. You're not going to have clearance issues with the bell in general. As I said, a lot of times you just wouldn't even need the scope covers for this. That's more for transport or in harsher conditions. Here is your focus and front objective focuses have some advantages. Technically they could be somewhat more clear. I find that this does go down below 10 yards. So if you needed to take really, really close shots, which is probably what you're gonna do a lot with a scope like this, you can get down there and then you have 10 yards, 15 yards, 25 yards, 50, 75, 100, 200. And that's practical range for a scope like this, even on a center fire. That's gonna be your practical range and then it goes up to infinity quickly after that. That portion is just going to be a very minute amount of adjustment to hit that, and that's really more than you would do with a scope like this, although just a little bit ago I did shoot it at 300 yards with success, so it's not impossible. The image was usable, and this seems to be, in a good way, firm and not sloppy or loose. It actually seems to be built pretty well for tolerances. I'm not seeing this be oblong or you know, kind of oval shape, it actually seems like it's threaded in there properly and it's not going to come off with uh, cold temperatures because it's fairly cold out right now and I've kind of muscled it back and forth. doesn't seem to be uh, irritating me <laughs> at all, which normally happens with scopes at this price point. Normally I would find some sort of irritation. This one seems to be holding up just fine.
like I said before, when it comes to a scope like this, uh, it's optimizing the center of the glass and that center reticle. So yeah, you're going to see some, some distortions towards the edge. That's very normal at the price point. I would say the uh, first round impact. There you go. Well, that's pretty good. I would say the glass clarity is easily enough. I'm getting a lot of hits. Those are all hits. Uh, the glass clarity is easy enough, and I'm shooting at 200 yards right now. It's easy enough for the things I'm doing. If you're somebody who's looking for a budget optic and you want to shoot, you know, relatively far with a rim fire, or you want to do some um, varmint hunting close up, and you're just not interested in spending a lot of money, that's a that's a six inch target at 200 yards. Hopefully you can hear that. It's not bad. If you need something like that and you're just, you know, on an extreme budget, this gives you some options. It throws in a flashlight, a laser, a backup red dot. And as long as you kind of know what you're doing and setting it up, zeroing it on max power, if you want to get into using mills, this is honestly how I got into it, was running optics just like this. So I didn't start out with a $1,000 optic or a $3,000 optic. Some of the stuff you've seen on my channel, I started off with things that were $75, $100, $200, somewhere in there. And I learned how to use the system. And so it definitely has a place and I continue to actually use, I have a couple optics like this right here in front of you where I still use them at times, especially on air guns. And so they kind of float around in my collection. You might see them on my channel from time to time in various ways. And I, I know that there's gonna be a group out there where they're just not interested in spending four or five, $600 in an optic. They don't need that. And quite frankly, I'm still hitting those targets every time. So it has a place. And if you like that, go ahead and comment or hit like, maybe share the video with a friend if they're looking for an extreme budget optic that can still do some things. It has Milleradian uh, based reticle and you know a performance level that's acceptable for the center of the glass. Go ahead and tell them about this. This might help them get into the sport and you don't have to run it with the extra stuff on there if you wanna run it more slimline, low profile. Uh, I think this will help them get into the game and get an idea of what it is that they wanna do or maybe they'll just be really content right here and it helps them hunt maybe do a little pest control and some plinking just like I'm doing right now. Thank you guys for watching the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for sending this out and being a supporter since the very, very beginning when I really didn't deserve it. I do appreciate it. <laughs> Those are double taps at 200 with a rim fire and empty.